State of the uh, City address. We heard that last night from the mayor. That's right. So uh, there were several main objectives in his uh, State of the City address. There was crime, one of the main objectives, uh, infrastructure, um, as well as accessibility, getting, uh, getting resources that the government provides, accessibility to those resources. So joining us live here on Daybreak this morning, we are. Uh, it's a pleasure to have Mayor Hoxett join us to talk about these initiatives and goals and challenges that the city faces. Thanks for your time. I know you're busy. Um, it's it's a it's an agenda chock full of some uh, hopeful accomplishments that you're wanting. First, let's talk about crime here. It's been an issue for years. We keep exceeding the record of criminal homicides in the city of Indianapolis. I know in 2016 you worked with former Chief Troy Riggs to start looking at beat patrols for police officers, and you're hoping to fully implement that now. Yeah, in fact, Kylie, uh, we are uh, in the process of fully implementing. Last night uh, on third shift, 78 officers were, f for the first time in 10 years, assigned a beat, as opposed to a zone, which can be 12 to 15 square miles. A beat allows an officer to work in a community and a neighborhood that's about a square mile or a may maybe a mile and a half. We hope that that kind of policing, which basically IMPD used to do mm -hmm. before we had such a uh, downturn in the number of officers. I think the return to that will go a long way toward making our neighborhoods safer. And you're, you're able to do it because you are adding hundreds of police officers. Yeah, in 2016, we added 85 new IMPD officers. In 2017, uh, we added another 85, another 85 uh, this year. So um, it's, uh, it, it, it was necessary to increase so that we can return to a more community-based neighborhood oriented beat system. And there have been some having beats the past two years, kind of slowly implementing that process. Are you seeing change in those neighborhoods? Yeah, interestingly, in those areas where we have implemented beat policing, uh, the level of violent crime and particularly mm -hmm. gun related crime has shown a decrease even at a time when there's been an incremental increase in gun related violence uh, citywide. So we are optimistic mm -hmm. that by implementing a community based beat approach uh, we, we will see those numbers start to subside. Those communities will see the same police officers coming to them, greeting them, getting to know them and they'll hopefully form a trust. Yeah, I think it's important that every neighborhood know their police officer mm -hmm. and every police officer know his or her neighborhood. I think that will go a long way toward making our neighborhoods safer and improving the relationship between IMPD and our community. Okay, so let's talk about infrastructure now. We all know there were a lot of potholes. I mean, it was terrible. I don't know how any human being could keep up with them. Right. Um, historically, the city has contracted out to people to fill these. You're saying in the state of the city address that you would like to spend $10 million to hire some people, uh, keep it within the city to repair these going forward, and, and buy equipment, kind of invest in the city's future there. Yeah, it's kind of back to the future uh, mm -hmm. in, in terms of returning to what Indianapolis did 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, we have, over the course of the past 20 to 30 years, m moved more toward a privatization mm -hmm. so that outside contractors essentially do all of the repair work. Our DPW workers today, they can fill potholes, but they cannot resurface roads. That's got to be done by a private entity. What I've proposed that the council consider, beyond the $88 million that they've already appropriated, which will begin today to help resurface and repave our roads, I've proposed that they consider rebuilding our street maintenance division so that we have a ready-made preventative crew to go out and prevent potholes before they even really begin. And this is really returning to the way Indianapolis did it mm -hmm. 30 years ago. I think it will go a long way. It, it will be no different than the crews that we already have that go out and plow the snow and pick up the trash. Mm -hmm. Did you learn some lessons from this, the way this pothole season went? Oh yeah, you can't go through a winter like we just went uh, through without being sensitive to the fact that we need to be more responsive. With all due respect to the pr private contractors that the city has engaged mm -hmm. over the last 20 to 30 years, they do a good job, but you're at their schedule. You, you work on their schedule. When they're available, then they go out and do the work. I want to bring Indianapolis back to a place where 
uh, men and women get up every day to report to DPW, and they know when they get to work, their sole job is to make our streets safe mm -hmm. and drivable. And you're saying with the additional police officers, the $10 million for the investment in the equipment, and, and the new and the more employees are saying with all of this, you propose it's not going to be used by raising taxes. No, I think that we can find the money uh, and appropriate uh, it with the council's approval, of course, uh, from the underfunding, the money that we've saved in previous budgets that has not been spent. It was allocated, it was budgeted, mm -hmm. but it was returned to the uh, general fund because it was not spent, because of prudent uh, decisions made during the course of the year. I think we can rely on that underfunding to uh, bridge the gap and to add another $10 million to road preventative maintenance. And I know lastly you, you wanted to focus on uh, getting people access to what the government, the city government offers. We've run out of time, but can you just quickly say, you know what, here's what we're doing, You're doing websites and technology improvements. Yeah, uh, the plain fact is is that we pay our bills by phone, mm -hmm. we order our food by phone, why not transact simple city business sure. by phone? And that's, that's what Indianapolis 3.0 is all about. Okay, Mayor Hogsett, thanks so much for your thanks, time. Kylie. Always a pleasure. Yep. Uh, Randy